and welcome to Mummy Diaries where we talk about all things motherhood. And we'll be talking about everything that has to do with motherhood. And also, we will be focusing on baby blues and postpartum depression. Chomi, welcome. Yes. Hi, Chomi. And thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you for having how me. How are you? I'm good. I you, am. Every time I ask people how they're yeah. doing, I want an honest answer. Yeah, so. I give a good failure or no, just. No, no. Okay. I'm good. Okay. I'm surviving. Mm -hmm. And I think I am navigating this thing called motherhood. Yeah. It changes all the time. It's never the same, the same today, yes. tomorrow. Sometimes I just think we are winging it. Like I'm just. <sighs> hey, I just want to breathe. <laughs> other in. days, other days I'm just like. I'm so grateful my I'm keeping my child alive. Some yeah. some days that's the goal because yes. it can feel so overwhelming. Yeah. But I think I'm good. We, yeah. We're definitely getting into a swing of things. Yeah. yeah. And how's work? Like I know you're an actress, yeah. uh, a director, yes. an activist. You were somewhere overseas, I doing the lot's work. York. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing? And and how is it going? Because I, I just love the fact that you are so busy, but yeah. it's not. You, you don't even show off. It's, yeah. it's, it's happening. It's just happening. Yeah. So I've definitely, I'll definitely say I've taken a bit of a back step from acting, acting. Um, after having room. And um, right now I've been focusing more on like our production company, getting things off the ground where business is concerned mm -hmm. and some business ventures that, you know, we've been sort of going into. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say like I'm done with acting altogether, but I think like, as it stands now, I'm still navigating other areas, but work has been going well. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously I'm, you know, on the on the board or the co-chair of uh, the International Behavior Change Organization called MTV Stay in Alive Foundation. And that's where I do like my traveling and uh, speaking so at different that? places. What, what's your role in that? Okay, so as a chair, so basically we advocate for young people and their sexual reproductive health rights and we give them tools to know that these are your options that you have when it comes to mental health, you know, gender-based violence, everything that has to do with young people and not just their sexual reproductive health, but also their behavior um, and behavior change. Right. So we produce a, a, a series called MTV Sugar mm -hmm. and we have one in South Africa, Nigeria, mm -hmm. Kenya, all those places. And so we produce this content for young people to consume, mm -hmm. um, for them to think about the choices that they are making. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Soul Buddies? Soul Buddies. I it's remember. kind yeah, of like, like it's an entertainment. And that's what we learned a lot yes, from Soul Buddies. From eh? Soul Buddies. Yeah. But then, obviously, I do a bit of traveling on behalf of the organization to speak to funders, partners, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So yeah. I think that's more of the advocacy just for young people advocating for their holistic health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we Now, do. let's talk about why we're here. Yes. Being a mother. Yes. Uh, I've known you for quite a while. And I remember, even before you had kids, you always took care of your... My nieces. Your nieces. <laughs> Yes. And you look like you really yeah. want to be a mom one yeah. day. Even before I became a mom, you yeah. were always with your nieces and, and taking care of them. Have you always wanted to be a mom? Always. I know. <laughs> always. Listen, um, everyone in my family thought that I would for sure be the first, first one, one to have kids. And secondly, to have the most kids. Like by now, my family Five honestly thought I was going to be having a soccer team, right? <laughs> um, so I've always loved kids. Mm. I've always been that aunt. Yeah. I was, you know, even when I was young myself, I think I was in varsity. I decided, I took it upon myself to be a foster mom. Hey, Imagine. Banana. I went to like one of, you know, those um, homes where they do have like soup kitchens and, you know, they feed the kids. Yes. And then I picked three kids and then I said... I'm your foster mother. I will. Uh, and then I went home with them and I told my mom, <laughs> I have foster kids. I kid you, true story. Oh I told my, my God. mom, I got home, I said, I'm a foster mother. My mother's like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And, and who, who's kids? Fostering who? And whose kids are these that you just decided <laughs> to, you know, foster? Yes. So I've always loved kids. Mm. I've always wanted to be a mom. Um, yeah, and it's always been that way. Mm. Now take us the day you found out that you're pregnant. Okay. What What were you feel? I like, you know sometimes you'll be like, ah, I'm having a pain here, yeah. or I'm vomiting. Yeah. Or how did you know that you have to do the test? Okay. So my journey was, I think, you know, very touch and go. Okay. In the sense that before we fell pregnant, this was our second pregnancy. So the first one, unfortunately, was a miscarriage. Okay. And the first time I found out I was pregnant, we I was so excited. I did the whole set up the camera, take the test oh. to Hungani. I had the video footage, oh. whatever. And it was during COVID. And then I went for my six or eight, I think it was the eight week or 10 week. I can't remember. Eight week, 10 week checkup. And then they were like this, you know, 
uh, it's a blighted ovum, which means like there's there's the sac, but there's nothing in there, yes. you know. And so I, it was traumatic because oh. then I had to have, because it was COVID, so I had to have like an at home. Um, not like abortion, but to get rid oh, of, yes, yes, you know, to, yeah. to clear it. To clear. And that didn't end well. So I was in and out of hospital for months after that. So by the time I fell pregnant the second time, we were so scared. scared. Yes. Like we were so yes. fearful. And the weeks leading up to finding out I was actually pregnant, I had taken pregnancy. I was sick. So I was very sick. Mm. I was throwing up. I was nauseous, all that kind of stuff. And I suspected I was pregnant, but I took in some pregnancy, like three pregnancy tests. They were negative. Went to the GP. He did a pregnancy test. It was negative. Right. So I said to Hungani, something's up, right? Because I don't know what's going on. And then I went to the gynecologist. She did some blood work. Mm -hmm. I think three days after she phoned me, she's like, listen, your blood work is showing you're pregnant. But there's one hormone that's way too low for you to be pregnant. This might end up being a miscarriage again. again. Oh. So I had to quickly, quickly, quickly go. She had to give me progesterone. And so from the beginning, we actually didn't have time to enjoy Joy, the, 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 the oh, yes, feeling, the moment. Yes. We were on eggshells from the time we found out yeah. to the time the baby we, was, the baby was yeah. here. Yeah. We were literally a mess yeah. the entire time. Every time I went to the gynecologist, she would say to me, your heart rate is way too okay. high. She started putting me on medication because I was having anxiety attacks. I had such a stressful pregnancy. I'm oh going to be no. very honest yes. with you. It was horrible. Yeah. I did not enjoy my pregnancy. Mm. We didn't enjoy my pregnancy. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because we just had an overwhelming sense of it fear. Is. It is. Yeah. And, and we also didn't want to celebrate because we kept saying, let's not get too excited, excited in case. until the baby's here. Even up until the seventh month when the gynecologist is like, you guys can celebrate. And and we'd be like, no, 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 let's no, not no, even, we're not even going to go buy a vest. No, no, we're not, hey, doing, we're not hey, doing anything. Hey, hey, because yeah. with the first kid, we already went to go buy outfits out oh, of excitement, man. you know, like. So yeah. I think for us, it was definitely different in the sense that we were just stressed. Stress. From beginning yeah. until she arrived, yeah. it was like everybody was able to, to breathe to, and yeah. be like, okay, she's here. Yeah. We can relax. Yeah. We can be at peace. But don't you, know? you think it's also the same thing as with, like, especially as black people, yeah. we are told, do not celebrate up yeah. until the baby's here. Yeah. Because back in the days, our mothers never had baby showers. Yeah. Their baby shower was when the baby is yes. here. But yes. with us, hey, gender reveal, gender reveal everything. Room, yes. Because we, we are, we're a different generation yes. and we, we're excited. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's definitely true. But I through that through that I we I didn't share anything on social media Good. and as much as people could see it, but I just left people to kind of you know people Leave say what they want to say yeah. yeah, and I didn't share it very yeah. much because of the fact that it's just it was the first time yeah. experience and yeah. you know um, very different kind of experience. Mm. I'll definitely say that my pregnancy like moved me so much closer to God because I had such anxiety and fear that yeah. I literally was like Lord. The only way that I'm going to make it through here is for what supernatural peace. And that's why my, that's my daughter's name. Be oh. at peace. Rulani means be at peace. peace yeah. Because it was literally an instruction yeah. from him that this child is going to come. I just need you to trust me yes. that this child it's is going coming. to be yes. here and yes. is going to come. Yes. And so that's what we named her. Be at peace as an instruction be at peace. peace. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. God is good, hey? Yeah. And you see it through the pregnancy that even if you didn't believe in him, yeah. you see that there is no way, yeah. there is nobody behind yes. this amazing experience yeah. that's happening 100%. inside of your body. Yeah. So like you spoke mostly about your pregnancy. Now let's talk about um, how it brought you close with your husband. Uh -huh. Because stress can either drift yeah. you apart or bring you closer yeah. as a couple. Um. It definitely brought us closer because I felt like we felt like no one else could understand better than you better guys, yeah. than us. Yeah. Because with the first experience, mm. you know, the two of us w had this loss and experienced mm. this loss. We processed it very differently. Mm. I chose to just move on. He really had a difficulty moving, you know, on from it. And this time around, because both of us had experienced that, no one else could understand better than. So we were able to communicate and open up and Talk say to that, this yeah. is how I feel. This is how you mm. feel. Today feels like this. You know, if I'm crying one o'clock in the morning, he'd wait. like literally it brought us so much closer together because 
if I say no one else could really, you know, no, they could say, yeah, we get what you're saying. You could read all the books, but having Hungani there go through the experience with me, mm. we definitely ended up being so much closer Close because they're like, this is a team. This it's, is it's, proper yes, teamwork is. that's yeah. happening here. Yeah. So I'm very grateful that I have mm. uh, such a supportive husband, husband yeah. and also someone who feels his emotions so deeply and he's not afraid to share to them. Share, yeah. And he didn't at any point feel like he has to be the, the man, man and be yes, strong, whatever. Yes. I don't know. If he felt a way, he felt a way. Yeah. If he was scared, he would tell me. Yeah. You know, so that channel of communication definitely mm. um, impacted our marriage mm. for the better. Mm. And we always somehow sideline men. Yeah. Especially when a woman goes through a miscarriage. Yeah. Because sometimes you're like, I'm the one who carried this yeah. baby. I'm the one who felt this pain. Yeah. But we sometimes forget that this man yeah. was also expecting this bundle yeah. of joy and it yeah. didn't happen. Yeah. So having someone who's in touch with their emotions like that, it helps to understand how yeah. they were as hurt. Yeah. And they're going through the, through the same pain. Exactly. It's just that it's different because you were carrying. Yes. You are the one who had to take the pills yeah. so that the, the, um, yeah. the baby can come out. Yeah. yeah. No, that was different. And I yeah. remember when, the, when that had happened, he was still shooting at Scandal. Oh. And the character had a whole family and he was struggling <gasps> to do, to do the, the scenes. And we don't know. You don't know. I didn't know. No. You guys are there, but oh you don't know. God. And he was struggling to do the scenes and he would come home and say, I am, I'm struggling oh. to do this, you know, and... Um, I feel like, you know, every day, because yeah. it was such a close, you know, yeah, time. And we time. hadn't spoken about it. We hadn't told production. It's, they hadn't it's, told it's, anyone. None of, it's none of their yeah. business at the time. At it's the time, done. yeah. You know, so now we can speak about, about it, it, obviously, we've because healed. we've healed yes. and we've moved on. And we can use it maybe, you know, what? Uh, to encourage other Imagine. people. But he struggled. But he had to he had to, act. to shoot. He had to shoot. Then he must shoot being a father. <laughs> you went through laws. Yes. That's hectic. Yeah. And then now... The baby's here. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm assuming because of the difficulty of your pregnancy, you didn't push you. Was it the cesarean it or was, No, it was a C-section. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, to have push. natural birth. I, I wanted know. to push so badly. <laughs> but um, another uh, worry was that I had very low amniotic fluid. So just What's to that? add to my stress. So the amniotic fluid, the, that wa the water, that water thing, yes, that, that, one. The baby, yes. that the baby floats in. in yeah. And that amniotic fluid is very important so that the cord doesn't get thing it around their neck mm. so that they're able to freely move, move about. So yeah. my amniotic fluid, every time I went for a checkup, it was going lower oh and lower God. and, and lower. lower. I couldn't even get a proper image because they use the amniotic fluid to bounce the whatever for the pictures. And I couldn't get a proper image of her because my amniotic fluid was just too low oh, okay so my gynecologist is like listen let's try and push to go you know 38 37 38 weeks mm. and then we're going to do c-section because mm. and at that point happening. i just wanted her to be healthy mm. and safe i said mm. listen cut you, you don't, don't have, have to cut. push yeah. it's fine i yeah. don't have to push yeah so i did have a c-section mm -hmm. um and yo hey that day whether it's cesarean whether it's pushing there's a lot that's Guys. happening the day you give birth. Hey, and we not. try and keep it together. But honestly speaking, I... I Were you also <sighs> dolled up? I get a nice these days. People put makeup on when they go give my birth. Thing. But <laughs> the only thing I did was <laughs> braid my hair because I said, nobody's trying to brush. I'm not trying to brush my hair, but I'm also not trying to look. Is it? But I didn't did dolled up. All I did was I remember doing my hair and I was in such a twilight zone. So my guy is like would keep asking me, are you like, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you all right? Because I mean, it was like, yeah, I was going through the emotions, yes. but it's like I was having an outer body experience yes. at the yeah. same time. And I think after, after she came and after I heard her cry, you know, it's I was like, able to just be like, okay, she's here. Yo. Hey. And then it started. Yo. It, and it never ends. Then it's the latching. Then she didn't want to latch. Then you feel like a failure because you want to breastfeed, breastfeed, but you're not yes. breastfeeding. And then you have advice from this one and this one Eat and that this. one. Eat Do that. this. Get, yeah. Then there's a midwife that comes and helps you. And the midwife is P that's poor and, nipple. Po pointing and pushing, oh then God. laying. And it was so overwhelming that I honestly could feel myself sinking into this just like state of being completely overwhelmed. I felt like, do I have a connection with my child? Am I just going through the emotions? Like, it was just the first few weeks after giving birth. I have newfound respect for moms because 
Wow. Wow. Yeah. Really, I remember yeah. so vividly finding myself every single day for about an hour or two hours. I would be in the shower or the bedroom just crying. Crying. And I would cry. And I I couldn't even understand. Why? Why am I crying? What's happened? And it would just come. Yeah. It would just come. And I'd be so emotional. Sometimes I'd be alone. Even if my, you know, my mom would come or Fungani was there. But at the same time, I would be so... It's like you're alone and everyone is there. And everyone's there. But everyone's there, but I would just feel like I'm by myself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then, obviously, your baby's trying to, you know... Connect with Connect you, with you. Attention. It's a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot. And yeah. so, I thought I was going through, like, hectic, you know, depression. Yeah. Um, and then I went to my guy, and she's like, it's baby blues, you know, let's see how it is in the next two weeks or so yeah. because that's more or less the time. The time. Anything from two days mm. to two weeks. And for someone who doesn't know what are baby blues, yeah. what are baby blues? So baby blues, the way I understand mm. it, is it was explained to me that it's basically having these overwhelming emotions, whether, you know, crying, anxiety, fear that happens straight after giving birth. So even two hours after giving birth and can usually last anything between like a few days to two weeks. But it's, it's just an overwhelming, I think it's an overwhelming sense of fear, anxiety, Mm. emotions, everything all together. And so you have these moments of just crying or these moments of just feeling completely Completely, overwhelmed. But the thing with baby blues is after about two weeks, it usually goes away Mm. by itself. Mm. Um, And that's the difference between baby blues and then postpartum Postpartum, depression because postpartum depression can last much longer, even up to a year, even I think two years, Mm. you know. And I think a lot of the times, a lot of women go through baby blues and think that it's it's postpartum postpartum depression. depression. Mm. Uh, Sometimes women are going through postpartum depression and baby baby blues blues at the same time. Or even going through either of them and not knowing What what it is. Just think what's wrong with me me? what's wrong you know why what's happening you know but we have to remember what your body has gone through it's a lot it's a lot yeah and we have to have a level of grace for ourselves to allow ourselves to experience and to go through those things you know do you think our moms went through it or it's just that they didn't know what what our baby blues and no i think they went through they didn't know they didn't know they didn't know and our moms our mothers our grandmothers it was that like suck it up Survivor Suck it up. Hey, hey. You just had a baby, so exactly. Yeah. You, you have a baby, baby yeah. breastfeed the baby, do what you have mm. to do. Mm. Um, go, 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 mm. go. I don't think they had the language, the language yeah. to express and yeah. say this is. I think a lot of the times they just brushed it to the side, or yeah. like many things. Yeah. And I think a lot of our moms and 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 women um, have certain traumas that they don't even realize are traumas Mm. and some responses are still traumatic responses to things that they experience Mm. but they didn't Mm. have the language or the um education in the most respectful way but they weren't told that this is what you're going to experience this is what you're going to feel it's completely fine and i think it was also a different time where support structures were concerned i'm not sure that our dads knew no how. They, did they didn't get they just <laughs> went to work out you know no, 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 I, have yeah, a child at home. I have to provide there was no i don't yeah. I, I don't know with our fathers yeah. if they had that whole thing of how are you my how darling how, what can i do yeah they were just being fathers they were being providers they're providers they yes. to provide you know yeah um and you had to be grateful for the provision so you can't be complaining about your emotions that's why they were not even part of they, they, they didn't even go inside when the woman gives no, birth. no there was no oh, no one all right <laughs> And now yeah. our boyfriends, husbands, they go inside yes. with us when we when we give yes. birth. Yeah. yeah, to have that support structure. Yeah. So definitely I agree with you what you said earlier. It's a different time. Different time. I'm very grateful for the different time because yeah. I can't imagine what they went through. And doing it like yes. seemingly feeling like you're alone. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, my pregnancy and after so the two weeks then came and then I did start feeling okay uh, better. Yeah. But I did have, I, I'm very grateful for the gynecologist that I had. And at my six-week checkup, or I think it was first my two-week checkup, she was like, listen, take care of yourself. Yes, you have a two-week old baby, but allow yourself, you know, to feel what you feel, but don't feel like you need to be everything at the same time. Give yourself 
time. Give yourself grace. Allow yourself, you know, to go out for dinner without feeling bad. Allow yourself mm. to be okay, you okay, know. Yeah. And then we also have this thing where our parents will tell us there's X amount of time you have to stay in the house in the before house you before can you, go. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and then you can't go anywhere you can't with the go baby. Anywhere then you with only the baby. go for checkups and come back. Listen, hey, we did our own thing. Yeah, I won't lie. I think yeah. Lou was like four weeks old. Ah, we went to church. <laughs> right? We didn't wait for yeah, six for weeks. Six weeks. Mm. Yeah, no, yeah. We and then out. after passing through that um hope the baby blues and realizing now now that you're getting used to this little human yeah. um around you guys, um, how did you know for sure that whew, the baby yeah. blues are gone? I'm fine. Yeah. Now I'm um, let me just focus on yeah. enjoying the moment. Yeah. So the thing with baby blues was that you know that it um I can't say now baby blues was done because I was now happy all the time and like I was I still had my you moments. know emotions and my moments. Mm. But what I definitely felt was a better sense of like control over my emotions. And I could also identify why I feel the way I feel right. in that moment. Like yeah. maybe I would be over like overly tired. Maybe I'd be like, um, you know, whatever, whatever was happening that day. That and day, then I yeah. could identify yeah. why I'm actually feeling Sad. what I'm feeling. Yeah. Baby blues. You don't know. I don't know. They can give you the, I could be having a conversation with you like this. And Next best thing, I'll just start crying. Yeah. Like, what outer body experience am Is I actually that, having? Yeah. So I was very much able to distinguish when I didn't have baby blues anymore because I would still have down days, but I would be able to recognize why those days are, you know, why I feel that way, why. Yeah. And it wasn't so overwhelming that that I couldn't bring myself out of it or I couldn't find a way to, you know, go for a walk oh, or yeah. do something, you know, yeah. to just uh, feel better, go sleep, mm -hmm. rest, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But with baby blues, I could sleep, I could do... I, hey, I remember this one morning... <laughs> I was eating <laughs> porridge and I'm, I'm literally, I'm fine. Rulani's next to me. She's sleeping. I'm catching up on some, you know, TV because she's asleep. I'm eating porridge, but like a normal, like nothing. Yeah. I'm, I'm not thinking about anything. I started bawling my Rulani. eyes out. Like I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah. I even started laughing at myself <laughs> in my tears. Cause I'm like, where's Alang? What's going on? What's going on? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and yeah. then my mom was like what what's is going wrong? what's wrong i said i don't know no, I maybe don't. also it's hormones, it's hormones. because like, like like you said your yes. body has literally taken a human being out yeah. and then now it's slowly ha it has to go back yeah. to its normal state your hormones need to regulate yeah. you know you have heightened everything, everything yeah so you're healing the season the 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 yeah section, section yeah, yeah, everything like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know um yeah. you're tired you're, ti yeah. you're not sleeping yeah. there's a lot of things yeah. happening so i definitely knew baby blues was done when those moments oh, were slowly, were slowly fading like away, fading yeah. away maybe and i could I, I don't you know remember. maybe i also did but i remember my my um emotions that it I started feeling alone when my mom left. Because oh. my mom came this side to help me um, with me. And about how long was that? She left very early. I don't know why. <laughs> I think two weeks after that, she left. Yeah. And I remember her leaving. The Uber was picking her up to go to the airport. And I remember the garage. You know, the, the, her garage. Yeah. I looked at this child. Yeah. And I broke down and cried. I'm like, like what I'm, now? So now I'm left with her. Yeah. Alone. Yeah. I've never cried like that in my life. Yeah. I felt alone. I felt like, why did she have to leave? But yeah. she has her own life and this is my child. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think it's baby blues, but I also, I could identify why yeah. I'm sad. Yeah. And I remember also because I breastfed for two years. Shh. And she I used remember to see, that. Remember, I enjoyed that. And I, I had keep asking I had milk for days. <laughs> I'm like, Buzzy, are you still breastfeeding? Yes. And I think, if I didn't stop her, yeah. trust me, she would still be feeding now. Yeah. Because now she wants to play with the yeah. nipple. Yeah. And she's like, oh, those are my boobies. Yeah, yeah. I remember I was so tired because I remember six weeks after I gave birth, I went back to Scandal to finish that story. Yeah. So I was feeding her and then I passed out. I don't know what happened. I think the milk went through yeah. her nose or something. She started coughing. No, she was blue. I had to take her to the hospital. I don't know what was happening. She turned blue. Oh my god. I thought this child oh. is dying. Because this thing of falling asleep yeah. while the baby while, is in your hand. Oh my it's it's a real thing. So I was she was not in my hand. Yeah. She was sleeping next, next to me in the to middle. You. And I was like, I just took the breasts out. I was like, Oh and then my. I passed that. I think she was feeding up until yeah. something happened. Or maybe your boob covered her nose, but then the she the boobies in the mouth, so she couldn't Steph, breathe. When I opened my eyes, she was blue. And we rushed to the hospital. 
imagine if something bad happened. I was going to blame myself because Shh. I was so, so tired. Exhausted. And this thing of trying to... And I was not trying to be a super mom. Yeah. It just happened. It just happened. You know, because you go to work, 7 o'clock call time, you come back. I can't give my husband my yeah. breast for him to feed. Yeah. I have to do it yeah. myself. And so many times... I felt like Mudimu, God is good. Because I yeah. remember also driving from work when yeah. I was pregnant to home. I passed out while yeah. driving. Sure. I had that moment of, yeah. that you know those things sitting in grr, grr. What are those things called, man? The grr. Those, the ones that are meant to wake you up. Yes, it woke <laughs> me up. If it wasn't for that, I'm sure I would have been dead. So sometimes oh we are, gosh. we don't was, understand yeah. what we are going through yeah. when we are pregnant. It's a lot. And I like what you said. It's not like, sometimes people... I like ah, you know, women. You guys are so dramatic. It's by choice. It's it's not like we're trying to say I want to be everything for everyone. It's it just, is literally it is just how it is. How it is. Yeah. And it's not to say that you don't have the support structures or whatever the case is that are there. But I just think that motherhood, parenthood, you know, being pregnant with or, or having a child hits differently. Differently, yeah. I'm not saying one is high. I'm saying it hits differently it does. for the mother. Yeah. And I think that. We have to be able to recognize that yeah. and just say, oh, yeah, no. Yeah, it is what it is. I, I, yo. We are so, hungry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. And being kind to yourself, yeah. like you're saying, like talking about, like, did you gain weight? Yo. And did I? How, uh, <laughs> how did that make you feel? I think, were you, were you stressed that you're not going to get your body back? Yeah. Or was it like, you know what? I just had a child and it, 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 it's, it is well. Yeah. I'm still stressed. <laughs> okay, yeah. So... Um, probably next to the first few weeks of the difficulty of like, uh, you know, acclimatizing myself with the first few weeks after having Rue, I think my next biggest struggle and I think still continues to be my struggle that I'm working on is literally the weight gain. And because my, you know, I have another condition called uh, PCOS, which is insulin resistant. And so my PCOS was raging right. because of my hormones and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And I, Pasi, hey, as soon as I could go back to gym, I went back to gym. So this is not a situation of I was lazy to go. I yeah, went back to like, gym. Oh, you've, 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 no. You had a, baby's, you had a yeah. baby years ago. Why are you, Why are you still big? struggling now? Hey, they judge. I went back to gym, got a personal train. I was eating what I needed to eat. But, but the, the weight, weight was, was not, not even dropping. It was coming. It was picking up. So after I had Rue, I gained 10 kgs after giving birth. Unprovoked. Unprovoked. Oh, I went back to my gynecologist. She said, I don't know what to tell you. Your insulin is six times higher what it's supposed to be. That means that your body's not breaking down anything that you're that eating. You it's storing everything. And she was like, I'm going to send you to, you know, uh, medical nutritionist, whatever, to check what we can do with your eating. But she literally said, this is a wave that you're just going to have to ride. I said, that is not the one that I want to hear. She's like, there's lifestyle changes we can make. This, but, but it's not like you it's will not go back something to your body. that yeah. you You'll have see, control, control over. over. And you may, you know, get there where you want to be, but you're gonna have to work a million times harder, harder than, than any anybody other else, any other woman who's given mm. given birth. Mm. And it was difficult for me the first few times getting back into acting because every time I do an audition, I just so feel like... You're so self-conscious and how you, when you go for fittings, you're like, oh my God. And I would have the worst experience, I think, around January when I was at my heaviest. Um, I went for a fitting. I sent them my sizes, but somehow they saw what I looked like on social media and they didn't think, you know, on social media you can hide. Of course. How, oh, oh, angles, like, like, angles. Angles, oh, yes, you know. Like how I'm sitting now, I'm hiding my mokada. Because <laughs> you guys talk too much. I get, oh, refer, oh. <laughs> Next best thing, you're trending for unrelated. For they, they settle, unrelated, they settle yeah. this part. We knew. Yeah, we mm. knew. Mm. We know. We know how social media yeah, goes. Yeah, it's terrible. I got to that fitting. They had my wrong sizes. Oh no! And I had to parade in front of the producer director with clothes that don't want to close. Oh. That time, my and the way my, they look at you, Igara, you wanted to be big, and 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 they don't understand that it's. That time my my boobs are three times. Are yo, they are yo yo yo. I don't even know how to get dressed because I'm not even used to yeah, the to size this body, and yeah. this body. So I had to find a way to love myself. I had yeah. to find a way to accept myself. I had yeah. to find a way to say I am putting in the work that needs to be put in, but I can't wait to be a certain size to start living. Yeah. I have to live now. Yes. I have to live yes. where I'm yes. currently. I can't be saying, oh no. 
when I get to this weight, then I'm going to start enjoying. Then I'll be happy. No, 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 guys. We can go on holiday, but just give me a few months to first. I had to just be like, you know what? This is the reality. This is the reality. And whatever roles may or may not come must take me like this. Please don't ask me for the headshots of before. Like, what am I going to do? Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a journey. I'm not 100% there, but I'm still on that journey of kind of just accepting myself loving myself, mm. living through it, living with it, um, but still keeping healthy, still making intentional choices to mm. eat well, mm. exercise, do all that stuff. Um, and, yeah. yeah. And then for someone who's watching, who's going through exactly yeah. what you went through, yeah. what would you say to them? To just like give them some yeah. kind of motivation? Or yeah. Like, look at me. Yeah. I, I went through it and I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is to know that it might feel like you're alone, but you're really not. Mm. For every one thing you're feeling, there's a hundred women who have felt, are feeling the same or something similar. And sometimes it helps to know that you're part of a bigger community that is also, has also experienced. I remember when we um, like uh, did a video on the miscarriage, there were so many women coming coming out and saying this also happened to me why do we never speak about Mm. these things why do we always just want to speak about the 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 great great stuff we don't want to speak about the realities of stuff you know and i think my so my my same advice would be like you're not alone right there's there are other there's a lot of women who have gone through these things and because people have gone through it and because there's nothing new under the sun you'll be fine. There's light at the end of the tunnel. It may not seem that way right Mm -hmm. now. It may seem very much like, you know, that's just completely dark. But because people before you have gone through it and they have come out on the other side and they have survived, you will also survive. You will also be fine. You will feel like yourself again Mm -hmm. one day, whenever Mm -hmm. that might be. You Mm -hmm. may not feel like yourself now, but you'll feel like yourself again. So just... Give yourself grace. Mm. We are so hard on, hard ourselves. on ourselves. Give yourself grace. Mm. Give yourself love, mm. you know. And then lastly, the most, one of the most important things that I say, and I say it because of experience, surround yourself with people who are an amazing support structure. Guys, yeah. ladies, be aware of who it is you allow into your space, into mm. your inner circle, mm. who you confide in, mm. who you tell your things to, because Ish. those things contribute to how you ultimately feel. Yeah. The reality of the situation is some people just, unfortunately, they get excited by for, the for issues your tears, and your issues, tears yeah, and yeah. the things you're going through. Yeah. In fact, They'll even come and visit you so that you can cry they can on their see shoulders. With, the, with their own eyes. Yeah. So vele, vele, you are yeah. on that deathbed. Exactly. Mm. So have a support structure. My support structure is my amazing. family. Yeah. And it, they're still amazing. Yeah. They still support us. I could not ask for a better support structure. Ngani's side of the family, my side of the family, mm. literally they hold us up in a way that yeah. I cannot explain. That's beautiful. So if you're able to have that, whether family or friends, mm. be mindful mm. of mm. who that is, mm. you know? Um, but you'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be fine. Absolutely. Yeah. And what's that one thing that you learned about yourself throughout this whole yeah. experience from the first child, from yeah. miscarriage, from from yeah. you being a mom yeah. to you now? Yo, I am so much stronger than yeah. I think. I'm so much stronger. Yeah. I am so, and not I'm not talking about strong like you can't be vulnerable. Hey, no, or you're not ever. Ever. no, I'm talking hey, about there is so much more to me than what I thought there actually is. And I think I have learned to appreciate myself so much more than always criticizing every single thing I think I need to criticize about myself, you know? So definitely a level of self-love and self-appreciation has gone a long way. Um, And then I think more importantly is just my relationship with God, man, I have gotten so close to God through this process. And I'm not sure would I have gotten close to him in the same way had I not gone through the things that I had gone through, right? Because only when you're at the end of yourself, then you're at the beginning of your relationship with him. So I had to find myself at the end of Mm. what I could control and then release the things I can't Can't control control. to him. So those two things have really work well to kind of grow me, Mm. mature me. Um, It's very interesting to see now if I were to go to spaces or places, I always think to myself, I'm sure if I go visit Scandal 
now i don't even know if they'd recognize the person i am you because are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cuz it's like you were you, like this kind of person yeah, and now no. when you have a conversation yeah. how Where are the you dudes? know i can't <laughs> Guys, I, I remember I, we used to go buy um, and, and cut out and cut material. And then where, yeah, what no. were we going through? Is it Rastafari? What was going on? Was it and, a style or was it? And it was a never ending style. Me, I think I had Pile and Zanele. <laughs> hey, or was it a calling? What was happening? Why we were in this like that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why we were getting ready for some higher. Something. Something was yeah, happening. Or or and something. we had every color. We did. I even remember. I remember was it Nikki? Red. Nikki, Nikki. Nikki did with pins and then folds. <laughs> like literally, you'd be at an event, but your head is like that because it's so heavy. Yes, it's just like grown. Yeah, no, but Today I love mothers. Uh, here we are, you know, mothers yeah. mature in our thinking mm. and the way we see mm. ourselves mm. and life, and I think it's beautiful. And I when really you look do. at your daughter, oh my gosh! Like, what's your favorite thing about her? <laughs> Guys, what's her personality like? Oh, she's got her father's she? face and my yeah. Are you gonna post her one day? I don't know. Don't as know. it stands now, no, no. But it's not to say it won't change. I know, because I was and like, are, I remember. I remember. I think I posted never on my social media <laughs> last year. Yeah, only because we I would only get get these, the eye and the hand because you really want to share you, moments yeah. and stuff. But yeah. I think I waited for her to to see the kind of person she yes. is. And every time we take videos, she'll yes. be like, yes, yes. So I think that's the answer. Yeah. In the lead, like. I don't want to post room now because I feel like at least when she's at an age where I can one see her personality, two she can tell me I don't want to be posted. Don't exactly. I don't want. I don't want people to or what, know. I don't yeah. want, or she can tell me take the camera. At as, as long as I can have a, some kind of conversation with, with her, her. Yeah. I just feel like why do I have to put her now yeah, on social like, media? And you one know? day she'll ask you, my mama, but why did why? you put me? Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. But she definitely has my personality. So I, we, we will see her soon. Definitely. She's so feisty, guys. I really? think sometimes, she's so young, but she's got so much like attitude, attitude and mm. spunk. She yeah. even tells you, no, no. Like, hey, Banna. She will tell you if she doesn't want something. Yeah. If you interrupt her while she's busy with something, she'll push you out of the way. If you're standing <laughs> in front of the TV, she's got so much feistiness. Yeah. But I love it. Yeah. I really love it. Yeah. But Hungani is always like, "Yo, you're a mother's child." Here with this. Marakira, she looks like him, and they all do that. Like you have a child, you your child for nine months, Rouge. and they come out looking like their father. Like why? I for even that. imagine. I even said the level of stretch marks, trauma. My oh. boobs are hanging on the floor. Oh. For a child to look like you <laughs> must be nice. I know. It happened to me as well. <laughs> yeah. Must be nice. Yeah. I think I gave two things. Her lashes and... Thank God. Because, I mean, she's half, not going to be like us putting hey, my lashes on. Half a hair. When I say half a hair, my child looks like I cut her hair in a style. No, it will be fine. I get most of the mm. time they sleep like... No, no. It's not even this. I thought it was the sleeping. It's the... It's the... It's the... Don't... The texture. Right? Oh. Here. It's her dad. Yeah. That coil. You know coil, those coils? Yes, it even yes. looks like... Yes. <laughs> yes. One, one. Like, it, it's very coily mm -hmm. and the shrinkage is real. Yeah. Here. You'll make it a style. No, it's a style. Even yeah. people ask me, do I cut her hair like that? Oh, my God. But that's her father's jeans. Yeah. Lastly, with your experience, mm -hmm. and um, would you have more kids? Or not would you? Do you want yeah. more kids? You do. Definitely. We yeah. definitely do. Um, at the right time. time yeah. Definitely. But we do. I'm not sure if it's kid or kids. Do we want another one or do we want more? Kid. Because it's what about a lot. one? Not kids or kid. <laughs> kid. I'm still scared to have the second one. I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. you know. And I think we also have to have freedom to change our minds. You know, guys, we can decide today we want to have a kid, kid. and tomorrow yeah. Yeah. I'm good with my one. Yeah. You know, I think too many people are monitoring our bodies are, and, and, our, like, oh, and our wombs. Uh, why? Why are you keeping oh, an eye on what? Number seven, it's time to make another yeah. one. With what? The age difference is going to be too, too much. Big, according to who? Because people just, have opinions. Just, you, you don't have a child. When yeah. are you having a child? You have, you have a, a child. child. When is the when next is one? the second one coming? Why are you waiting so long? Three years max. Why? Mm. Oh, guys, please stop watching yeah. our bodies yeah. and what's happening in our yeah. families, you know? So we definitely do want more kid or kids. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah. We'll and with goes. that, because like you're saying, I didn't know you went through miscarriage. Yeah. Imagine me asking you, how oh, Steph, when are you having a baby? What's that happening? time you just went through yeah. uh, um, a miscarriage. So yeah. I think people should start should stop asking people when they're having kids because you yeah. don't know what someone you is going through. You don't know what they're going through. And it, 
I think a lot of the times it's not meant from a like you know necessarily from a a bad, a bad place. place. Yeah. But I think in 2023, with yeah. all the technological advances at our disposal, mm. we can grow and understand. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's not asked those questions yeah. all the time. Yeah. And for someone, lastly, for someone who has who thinks that they have those baby blues or mm-hmm. maybe they don't know the difference between the baby blues and the postpartum depression. Yeah. What advice would you, where should they go? Like yeah. where did you go okay. to get help and to understand that yeah. oh this is not depression, yeah. this is baby blues. So These are baby blues. I think two places. One um, if you were going with your gynecologist, like if you, you know, you had a great gynecologist or um, even some people have midwives, midwives, midwives yeah. also, you know, understand it mm-hmm. really well. Mm-hmm. I would say don't keep quiet. Say how you feel, what you're going through. That way you can get help if help is needed. But I think they usually give it like two weeks yeah. or I think at your two week checkup or if it now is after six weeks and you're still feeling that way, speak about it so that they can be intervention from your gynecologist can refer you to, a, you know, a therapist or whatever yeah. the, the steps are that yeah. they'll need to take. So that's the first thing. Don't be afraid to actually speak about the experiences that you're going mm. through. And then I think, secondly, if you are able to, I would I would recommend that a lot of women um, have one of these prenatal Pre- classes. classes. Because prenatal classes actually prepare you mm. for these kinds of things. And you're also mm. able to ask questions. And a lot of prenatal classes... They do prenatal, but then they also have postnatal. Post. And mm. stuff can be done online these days. Mm. You don't have to actually go to go the to, classes. Yeah. They're not that expensive mm. anymore. It's very accessible. Mm. So if you're able to rather say, let me have prenatal, postnatal classes so that I can have a community of women where well, I can just say, yeah. guys, this is what I'm feeling. Did you also, Did you also feel this? it? Yeah. You know. Yeah. But at any point in time, if it becomes so overwhelming that you really feel like you can't do it anymore, Mm. speak out. Mm. Say something Mm. to someone, Mm. Mm. a friend, a family member, your doctor, your midwife. Just don't keep quiet. Don't bottle it up inside. And if you need help, say it. Say it. Because you're not superwoman. Yes, that's what I'd say. Speak up. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. And all the best, Mama. I'm sorry that she looks like her dad and (laughs) not you. You know, if we have, (laughs) listen, like if we have other kids now, that's my my direction of prayer. Yeah. I'm like, can my kids not look like, it's actually looking like his family. So sometimes they look like his sister. Sometimes they look like his dad. You know, but. Yeah. I'll come there. Nah, I'll be there. Me too. One day. <laughs> One day. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching Mommy Diaries. Be kind to yourself. And if you have a problem, do shout out because, you know, we're raising this kids, the whole community. And yeah. like she said, check the people around you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.